What's up and welcome back to the channel. Listen, I gotta tell you guys, I just got back from Disney and I had a vacation for a week, which was amazing. But that lightsaber, I'm pretty sure hasn't left my side like all week. It was one of the coolest hands down experiences ever. Hopefully it looked as cool as how I felt doing it. All right, so a little while ago, I had the guys at Cinematch reach out to me in order to review their plugin for DaVinci Resolve and review it for you guys. Now, I just have to say, I don't think matching cameras between each other has ever been easier. Let's get into it. So full disclosure right off the bat, they didn't pay me anything for this video. They didn't tell me what to say. It's a full honest review that I did by myself, but they did give me the plugins for free. So they sent it to me to review, to look at. I've been experimenting with them this whole time getting to know how to do it behind the scenes and how to work it, but all the opinions are 100% mine. All right, so we all know if you're working on productions or things like interviews, most of the time you have shots from different cameras. You're either trying to match to a camera or you have to pick up a shot with a different camera or things like interviews have different cameras with different angles that you're all trying to match at the same time so that your interview looks consistent throughout every single shot. Even on big productions, you're talking about things like action shots filmed with GoPros or different tiny cameras that you can fit in somewhere. I know some productions have had Sony cameras in there. They're starting to use the red Komodos for action shots. So you're gonna have to match that to your main camera, which let's say your main camera you're shooting on an Ari Alexa. So you have to match every other camera to that so that it's not distracting and it doesn't break continuity as well. Now, largely for the most part, that's been done manually. There have been some things that can help. Like for example, there are LUTs out there that you can convert from one camera to the other. A lot of people in post-production build their own LUTs for that kind of stuff. But for the most part, you're going in there and tweaking stuff manually. Now, you would probably jump in there and do things like color correct first. You would maybe try to get as close as possible with color space transform, then go put your color grading on top of that. And most of the time with enough practice and patience, you can get a near perfect result and match your cameras really well in post. But that usually takes a lot of time and a lot of practice. And sometimes in post-production, as we all know, you're just in a pinch to get your footage out to finish your project or sometimes you just want a really good starting place or a base where you can easily get to match two different cameras together without spending that much time on it. And that's exactly where Cinematch comes into play. Now, right before we jump in, please be sure to hit that subscribe button as it helps me out a lot. Hopefully you guys stick around as videos go up weekly, talking all about filmmaking stuff. And if you like this video, remember to give it a like, comment down below, do all the YouTube things, share it with your friends, tell people about this channel, it's a great place to be. All right, so let's jump in and talk about how Cinematch works. All right, so here we are in Resolve and I have open effects open on the side here. Now, the wonderful people at Film Convert gave me the Resolve version of the plugin to try out, but if you really like it and you mainly edit on other software, it is available on Adobe Premiere Pro and they just launched it for Final Cut Pro as well. You can also head over to their website at cinematch.com and they have a free trial available to see if this plugin is right for you. I'll link all of this down in the description below as well, so you don't have to remember these links and stuff. You can just go down there and find everything. So how does it work? Well, there's a lot that goes into an image sensor's look, but essentially there's the sensor and the image processing pipeline or color science. These work together to interpret what's being recorded from the sensor. Even in RAW, you have more latitude to push and pull that look, but there's still a signature look given to every camera by the manufacturer. A lot of the times you'll see and you'll find that when using a LUT or applying the manufacturer LUT for the camera, it usually comes out to a very specific kind of look. When you're adding something like color space transform, you can get pretty close, but it's not taking into account the color science and how it works with the sensor of that particular camera. So what Cinematch does, which is different than Color Space Transform, for example, is that they've analyzed how different cameras interpret the data from the sensors given the same conditions. It first aligns the sensor data from the source camera to your target camera so that they align. Then the color science of that target camera that you want to get to is applied so that it matches with the desired output. By reproducing that color from the target camera, you'll get better results. And the cool thing is there are lots of other tools to help you further 
refine it as well. So if we look here in Resolve, I actually have a red clip, for example, and let's say I wanna to convert to match another camera I'm shooting on. For sake of this example, let's say that the production was mainly shot on an Ari Alexa, so we wanna to try to match an Ari Log C curve to work with. We'll start by dropping Cinematch on our node, which opens up the options here. So step one is the sensor matching. So let's pick as our source, the red camera that this was shot on. It's epic, so we'll switch that there. And this is log 3G10, and then we'll choose full. Now for target, let's say we've shot on Ari Alexa, like I said, so I wanna match that and we'll choose Ari here, Alexa log C and then hit okay. It's done the sensor conversion first, which applies the different color science and how the sensor interprets data to our target camera, which is an Ari Alexa. And now if we click this box, it'll also apply conversion straight to Rec. 709. So you don't have to look for and drop the LUT on your footage from the manufacturer. You can just go straight to Rec. 709 from here. That looks amazing already. Actually, the saturation and the color come right up and we have a great looking image. I have another version of the footage here where I did it with just a color space transform. So if we switch between versions, you can see that still gets you to a really good place. But in terms of matching, the Cinematch image, in my opinion, gets you closer to that signature Alexa look that it's known for. Those creamy looks and even the lighting here matches more closely to what you'd see on an Ari Alexa. If we look at the CST version, if I go back to that, it's, it's pushed the red image into a log C curve, but the sensor is interpreting it like a red sensor. So you get that deeper contrast and a more edgy look overall. Not saying that that's bad, but in terms of matching cameras, you don't necessarily just want the look of a red camera on a log C curve. You actually want it to interpret the data like an Ari Alexa would interpret that data. Now, there are some more tools to more closely match your shots, especially if you're comparing two very similar shot setups. So for example, we have a couple of false color modes, including middle gray. If we turn it on, it'll show you what's exposed for middle gray, and we can slide the exposure around until we get the area of the skin exposed just right. If you're matching between two shots, you would want to make sure that the same part of the face is exposed the same for middle grain. We can also expose the skin tones. So if you click that and it'll highlight the areas of the skin that are properly exposed. So that's another option you have as well. We also have temp controls. So if we turn on false color temp, we can then pick a neutral area of the image and slide this around until it looks neutral. In this case, we want to be looking at the background here which should be a neutral color so I'm looking around this area of the image here so then we have false color tint now there's some blues and greens in this image around here at the bottom especially around the bar and the bottles that are set up here and our skin is pulling in magenta so you have to be careful what you're looking at but if we're looking at the neutral parts we're pretty good around here I'd say. You also get the white balance picker as well so if you have a white area of your image that you're looking at you can just click on that and it'll adjust your image automatically. Now this second clip here is shot on red as well so let's say I want to match this to Ari Alexa again. We'll jump in and do the same thing with the settings so source is red epic and we'll do log 3g10 and full range here for target again Ari Alexa and switch it to full range. So it's done the conversion Let's click on Rec. 709 now, and we get a good baseline to work with. We can start going in now and messing with exposure and temp and tint matching. One last thing, it also gives you this panel here where you can make even more granular changes as well. You have HSL curves here, and you get these source and target pickers as well. So let's say, for example, the reds are a bit too saturated. What you can do is you can select a source. So say up here, this is what I'm looking to change. And then you'd click on target and find a more muted red, for example, because let's say I want to bring the saturation down. And there you go. So it'll adjust the HSL curve for you and you can really dial in the look with this. In this case, we're on saturation, but you can do that with hue and luminance as well just by clicking on these little HSL buttons over here. All right, so there you go. That's it for me for this video. Really cool plugin that's really powerful and it's cool to see these things come along that can make post-production that much easier and more accurate for all of us. 
Now for these examples, we mainly focused on matching one camera to something else. Like for example, in this case, we said we were shooting on an Arri Alexa for the rest of the footage. But if you're working in a multicam scenario, CineMatch also offers tools for that to try to match all the different cameras between interview angles, for example. And the great part about all of this is that CineMatch actually offers a very wide range of cameras to choose from in their plugin as well. There are a lot of cameras on there, including the R5 and R6 right now, as well as the C300 and C500 line of cameras as well, which is very popular. You also have the Sony cameras on there, including the A7S III, which is very popular among filmmakers and YouTubers as well. Now, they're also adding new cameras all the time, so you can follow them and check for updates constantly just in case your camera isn't on there. But like I said, they already have a very wide selection, so you can actually go to their website and check which cameras they offer right now as part of their plugin. But that's it for me though. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far in the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like this video and comment down below as well. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, go out there and create something. Live a day.